I confessed my love to the school bell in public, but I did it in Spanish. She asked me what it meant, but I didn't tell her. The next day, I transferred schools. It felt thrilling to leave after showing off. We met again, surprisingly at my Spanish professor's house, and she turned out to be her daughter. I've had a crush on Willow for two years. She transferred to our class not long before I was about to leave, with regret, on the day I left. Taking advantage of the nose on the tennis court, I boldly shouted, Willow, te amo. It's Spanish, meaning I love you, Willow, who had just scored a point, was stunned and looked at me with a few curious glances. I quickly put away the phone I was secretly using to take pictures, pretended to be calm, and gave her a cheering gesture. Willow stared at me for a few seconds, then suddenly smiled. That smile seemed to have the power to see through people, making me feel guilty. In a short while, it was time for a break. Willow put down her tennis racket and sat directly next to me, sitting on the chair. She looked at me and smiled, asking, What did you say just now? I nervously swallowed a few imaginary gulps of water and lie. I said, Go for it. She looked at me suspiciously, crossing her arms, and scrutinized me. I didn't hear that, my heart tightened, and I argued, it's the same, just that I said it in Spanish. There was a moment of silence. I glanced at her sideways, she seemed to be thinking, a trace of cunning flashed across her face, and she smiled lightly. Sounds nice, out of nowhere, the compliment left me confused. Ah, en serio. She deepened her smile, slowing her tone. Yes, that Spanish phrase sounds nice, thinking about the meaning of that Spanish phrase. I suddenly felt a bit awkward. I opened my mouth for a long time but couldn't utter a word. Willow, however, seemed inexplicably delighted, her smile reaching her eyes. She pointed at the court, raising an eyebrow. George, whenever I score a point, can you cheer for me with that Spanish phrase? What? I widened my eyes, feeling like my brain was smoking. Every time she scored, I would have to shout, I love you. That wouldn't do. I still wanted to keep my dignity. Seeing me silent, she made the decision herself, that settled then. Then she ran back to the court, I stood there dumbfounded. Such a thing for the class, at this moment. I couldn't care less about the class, I just hoped she wouldn't score too many points. After all, I was timid and obedient, only daring to secretly admire her. I wouldn't dare to shout openly, even in a foreign language, contrary to my wishes. She scored points shortly after going back on the court. She even proudly waved at me signaling me to say that special cheer, playing dead was not an option. I had to nervously mouth the words, she seemed dissatisfying, and came over during a break. With a meaningful smile, she said, George, you haven't cheered for me yet. I was stuck, looked around, and tried to bluff my way through by saying, Willow, T-U Alma, meaning your soul. Willow shook her head confidently, not this one, the other one. I was speechless. She didn't understand but could tell it wasn't the same, so I had to honestly say, Willow, te amo. Only then did she leave smugly, leaving me standing there awkwardly like a statue. Willow seemed to have gained some kind of power, becoming more energetic and scoring repeatedly. I was numb from shouting Willow, te amo. Struggling through the match's end, I grabbed my backpack and ran. But as soon as I reached the school gate, Willow caught up. She said I worked hard to cheer for her and insisted on treating me to milk tea. Then took me to the milk tea shop. Thinking I wasn't cheering but taking advantage, I quickly took out my phone and paid for the drinks. I said, it's not right for a girl to pay. I also inserted the straw for her. She smiled and said thank you. Willow looked up at me and said, George, we're friends now, right? I was stunned, raised my milk tea cup and clinked it with hers. Of course, she thought for a moment and then smiled. How do you say male friend and female friend in Spanish? Male and female friend. Boyfriend and girlfriend? I took a sip of pearls and said without thinking, female friend is feminine. Novio. Male friend is masculine. Novio. Oh, she seemed to understand, put away her smile, and asked earnestly, so if you're my male friend, it's SOS me novio, and if I'm your female friend, it's so to you novio, right? A pearl choked me, making me cough violently, almost choking to death. Our current relationship couldn't use these two words, it should be amigo, amiga. These two words are used for boyfriend and girlfriend in a romantic relationship. We're just ordinary friends, and how did she learn to conjugate the verb? Could she be a language genius? 
I was about to correct her when an evil thought flashed through my mind. Since she didn't understand, I might as well satisfy my inexplicable desire. So, I nodded, ignoring the loud gong in my heart. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Willow's eyebrows curve, her smiling face looking like something great had happened. I endured the awkwardness and scratched my head, smiling along. The early autumn wind held past, bringing with it a sweet osmanthus fragrance. At the bus stop, the shadows of to school uniforms stretched lawn in the twilight. I looked at the shadows, sometimes intertwining with Willow's hair, and my heart raced. I remembered the notebook in my backpack and handed it to her. I just took random notes. If you need it, take it. She took a look and saw it was full of solutions to the function problems she couldn't solve. She opened her mouth in surprise. How did you know I needed this? I said nervously. Well, as long as it's useful. She held the notebook to her chest, clutching it tightly like a treasure, and said, It's very useful. I love you for this. Overwhelmed with excitement, her habitual phrase I love you slipped out. Both of us froze and blushed instantly. That, that was a slip of the tongue, she hurriedly explained. Oh, I pretended to respond indifferently, revealing no emotion, but in the profile I secretly glanced at, I couldn't hide my affection. As the clouds turned orange red, my bus home arrived. Willow saw me on to the bus. I sat by the window and waved goodbye to her. She waved back. See you on Monday. Novio, see you on Monday. Boyfriend. I suppressed my racing heart, nervously not knowing where to look. Thinking she wouldn't understand, I pretended to be calm and nodded. Oh, okay. Willow seemed very happy, smiling the whole time. Actually, so was I as the bus started moving. I couldn't contain my Joe any longer and grinned broadly out of her sight. It wasn't until I realized we couldn't meet on Monday that the bus had already gone far. When I got home, I hurried to charge my phone, thinking I had to add Willow on WeChat. I needed to properly say goodbye to her. However, before I could turn it on, my mom took the phone. Leave it to charge at home. Your aunt is here to see us off. Let's go eat first. Reluctantly, I followed my mom to the restaurant. My parents have always worked abroad, and I grew up with my grandparents. My mom transferred her job back to take care of me, and everyone was happy for me. Only I was preoccupied with thoughts of Willow, eating the meal as if years had passed. Finally, the meal ended, and I wanted to get my phone back, but my mom stopped me. We have a flight at 10 a.m. tomorrow. We need to get up at 5, go wash up and sleep. Unable to contact Willow, I was anxious and pleaded with my mom, but it was useless. I had to grudgingly obey. It wasn't until we arrived in our new city the next day that I got my phone back, only to find my WeChat account had been deactivated by my grandmother. My previous phone number was registered under my grandmother's ID, and since I was moving away, she canceled the number because she had been scammed before. She cautiously asked my aunt to log into WeChat and deactivate my account. Even my QQ account, which was linked to that number, was lost as I couldn't remember the password without the SMS verification Everything was gone. Despairingly, I flopped onto the bed. Mom, why didn't you tell me before canceling my number? My mom looked innocent. I wasn't involved. But your grandmother said she had asked your teacher and confirmed there was nothing important on WeChat. So, she canceled it. She also said she had already said goodbye for you in your momentous at WeChat and told you to focus on your studies. I was speechless and almost in tears. I really had to thank my grandmother hearing me complain about losing contact with friends. My mom warned me to prioritize my studies and strictly control my phone usage. Thinking about my almost reciprocated crush being crushed in its infancy, I was heartbroken. But knowing my mom's strictness, especially towards early romance, I knew resistance was futile, and I had to accept it. Later, I was busy adapting to the new school, the new teaching methods, and getting along with new classmates. I temporarily put aside the matter of contacting Willow, unable and unwilling to deal with it. When I calmed down, I realized even if this love was reciprocated, now is not the time. Not only were we mill apart, but we were also in our crucial final year of high school. Various factors suggested a temporary separation might be the best outcome. I naturally felt regret for not being able to say a proper goodbye, but for now, that's all I could do. I could only wait until after the college entrance exams to contact her, if possible. Then, lost in thought, I sigh and muttered to myself, let's leave it to fate. 
After a few days of feeling down, I adjusted my mindset and focused on studying. During the spring festival, I went abroad with my mom to reunite with my dad and didn't return to my hometown. I completely lost contact with Willow and my previous friends half a year later. I got into my dream university and finally had the freedom to use my phone. I asked my grandmother for help and finally reconnected with my old friends. After catching up and venting about my lawning, my friend mentioned Willow, what happened with you two? She went crazy trying to find you. She kept pestering me for your contact information. When I showed her your deactivated WeChat, she reluctantly believed it and called you a liar. I felt a bit guilty and very sorry. After all, in the age of the internet, losing contact without even a goodbye was inexcusable, but I was curious. We only had a brief friendship over a cup of milk tea. Did she need to look for me so desperately? Did she say why she was looking for me? No. She asked about your university choices, seemed unhappy for a while, and I almost thought you two had dated. Then she started dating a guy from another school named Juan Gabriel. She really liked him, and apparently, even had custom bracelets with his name on them. I stiffened. The words I wanted to ask about her contact information stuck in my throat. The disappointment in my heart was unmistakable, and I responded faintly, Oh, by the way, Willow said, if she ever gets your contact, she tell you first, don't tell her. We're not that close, those words were probably said when she didn't have a boyfriend. Now that she has won, reconnecting has no meaning for me. After all, my feelings for her were not pure, and I didn't want to intrude on her happiness under the guise of friendship, causing myself unnecessary trouble. Since I missed my chance, I should let it go. Cutting off contact completely was the wise decision. Though my heart ached and I envied that guy named Juan Gabriel, I ultimately was just George. My friend talked about his new girlfriend and asked if I had one. Absent-mindedly, I said, yeah, a few. Ignoring my friend's scream on the other end, I found an excuse to hang up. Disappointed with my long-held expectations falling through, I sat on the dorm balcony in a daze. I opened my phone and ordered a few bottles of beer to mourn my lost years of secret love. Half drunk, my roommate David came back. He looked lovestruck, hooking his arm around my shoulder and shaking me vigorously. George, George, I saw the Spanish professor's daughter today. She's really beautiful. Her figure, her looks, she should still be in the professor's office. Let me take you to see her. He couldn't stop praising her. I scoffed and brushed off his hand. No one could be more beautiful than Willow. I had never seen a girl prettier than her. Seeing I was unmoved, he noticed the beer bottles next to me. What's wrong? Heartbroken. With whom? When? You've been hiding it well, he asked in rapid succession. It was a crush. I told him about my almost successful crush. He sighed in regret. Just missed it by a bit. If only you hadn't transferred. Well, it's in the past. Crush so always come with regrets. Saying that, he opened a beer too, no worries, I'll introduce you to someone else, how about the professor's daughter? She's definitely your type, I rolled my eyes and teased, why not introduce the principal's daughter and all the pretty, top performing girls in our school to me too? His eyes lit up, and he hooked me closer, patting his chest, sure, I'll introduce them all, leave it to me, I snorted, not taking it seriously, thinking he was joking. I washed up and went to bed. The next evening, I went to the translation club meeting. The seniors looked at me with pity. After a few comforting words, they started praising Senior Maria in front of me. I found out David had gotten drunk again and not only spilled about my heartbreak, but also turned my drunken joke into my dating criteria. Trying to find me a girlfriend in the translation club, in the end, everyone thought Senior Maria fit the bill and started matchmaking us. Senior Maria is our translation club president and our Spanish professor's niece. She has excellent grades and looks pretty, but her personality is too composed. Always carrying a cool aura, like my cousin who always criticizes me. I only respect her but feel no romantic interest. So, I immediately refused. Don't joke around. My relationship with Senior Maria is like siblings. Not what you think. I looked at Senior Maria, signaling her to agree but she remained silent, blushing. After a few seconds of confusion, I panicked. Could it be? Seeing her silence, everyone got even more excited. Even the president agreed. Why are you hesitating? Yeah, be a man. I had a headache, not knowing how to get out of this. Glaring at the drunk David, 
At that moment, there was a knock on the door, and the Spanish professor stood outside, smiling. I've been listening for a while, you guys are lively. The crowd, not afraid of trouble, added fuel to the fire. Professor, you came at the right time. George is looking for a girlfriend, and we think the president is perfect. We're matchmaking them. The president is your niece. If they get together, you'll be family. Ha ha, the professor, amused, said, they do fit well. I like George the most, but you can't force feelings, especially since George just had a heartbreak. Don't tease him. The professor hurt everything. How embarrassing. But the uproar continued. The group was relentless. Saying things like keeping it in the family. Determined to pair me with Senior Maria, they were truly relentless. Especially the drunk David, who, usually quick to speak, had no filter when drunk. He repeatedly chimed in. Professor, it's not heartbreak. It's that his crush has a boyfriend now. Then he spilled my entire crush story. How I use Spanish to flirt and how I deceitfully called someone his girlfriend. A burst of laughter erupted, my heartbeat quickened, and my hands felt awkward at my sides. Willow also seemed surprised to see me. Her expression was a mix of curiosity, surprise, and a sudden frown. We stared at each other in silence for a long time. David broke the silence, introducing me to Willow. This is George, the guy Senior Maria likes, my friend. Willow's face darkened further. I wanted to greet her, but her stern look stopped me, and I just stared at her without speaking. The others thought I was smitten. Oh, the president is in danger. George's soul has been stolen by Willow. He's more smitten than any of us. He seems beyond help. Hey, George, wake up. Willow has a boyfriend, right? Willow, of course. I knew she had a boyfriend, and his name was Juan Gabriel. Willow, silent for a while, nodded. Yes, I have a boyfriend even though I knew it. Hearing her confirm it hit me hard. The next second, she walked through the crowd to stand in front of me, looked up, and stared at me for a long time. Her intense gaze made me uneasy. She finally spoke slowly. So, long time no see. Boyfriend. What? The crowd erupted. I was dumbfounded, staring at her in disbelief. Everyone in the room was puzzled. Willow called George her boyfriend. What's going on? Did I hear that right? Do you know each other? Everyone's eyes were darting between Willow and me. Especially, when they looked at me, they were eager for answers. I snapped out of it and explained. Actually, we were high school classmates. The crowd was shocked and even more confused. High school classmates? Then why did you act like strangers just now? I didn't know how to explain. I was scared silent by Willow's strong resentment. Willow, her pretty face full of resentment, said. Just classmates? I asked. What else? She smiled. Are you sure? Don't you have anything to say to me? Thinking of her having a boyfriend, I felt sad and forced a fake smile. I wish you happiness. Willow's face darkened further. Well, you're really good at pissing people off. George, weren't you the one shouting Willow? Te amo. Weren't you the one saying we were novio and novia? Or should I say conuge? I finally realized. Right? She's the Spanish professor's daughter. Of course. She understands Spanish. So, she understood all my nonsense back then. This is, my toes curled with embarrassment. She continued to press. I heard you're my mom's favorite student. Tell me, what does novio and novia mean? She was asking the obvious, but knowing I was at fault, I awkwardly reply, boyfriend and girlfriend. Aha, and te amo. I love you. Willow seemed satisfied. Her lips curled up. Her tone softened. Yo te amo tambi which means, I love you too. I was completely stunned, panicking, sweating, my mind buzzing. After a brief moment of clarity, I didn't understand. She had a boyfriend. Why say such confusing things to me? I thought of the guy named Juan Gabriel and asked, but don't you have a boyfriend? She was exasperated. Yes, and you are. But unlike you, people maintain long distance relationships and you played hide and seek, impossible to find. The facts were clear, but I was still struggling. But they said your boyfriend is called Juan Gabriel. She rubbed her forehead, took out a bracelet, and pointed at the letters engraved. J-B-D-L-R-Y. Spell it out yourself. Is it Juan Gabriel or George, even if I were slow? I knew it was George. I was thrilled, embarrassed, and in disbelief. But if you understood, why didn't you say anything back then? Willow sighed helplessly. I wanted to surprise you. But it turned into a shock. It turned out that after I confessed, Willow had ordered matching bracelets, 
planning to confirm our relationship on Monday. But I disappeared. It almost drove her crazy. Later, someone saw the letters WG on her bracelet and spread it as Juan Gabriel. She was too lazy to explain. And so the rumor spread. The crowd pieced together the story. So Willow was the secret crush George flirted with back then. Yeah, and George was even jealous of himself. Willow even helped her cousin pursue her own boyfriend. Damn, we thought George was just like us, comforting him. And now we feel so embarrassed. David was laughing so hard he was clutching his stomach. Those poor beers you drank, they took on a burden that wasn't theirs. The professor and her friend were also laughing uncontrollably. Embarrassment was my companion tonight. I had nothing more to say the professor took my hand. Looking very satisfied. George, from now on, Willow is your responsibility. Take good care of her. Blushing, I stammered. It's no trouble. This may everyone laugh even harder. After the laughter subsided, people remembered Senior Maria, especially Willow, who gritted her teeth. Sister, what were you planning to do earlier? Senior Maria brushed her hair aside and said helplessly, I didn't say anything or plan anything. You must have misheard. Everyone chimed in. Yes. Yes, we didn't say anything neither, we know nothing, they were really good at changing sides. Senior Maria didn't seem embarrassed or upset. She looked more curious and like she was enjoying the drama, occasionally glancing our way to see if there were any new developments. She probably didn't like me that much either. She had never been in a relationship, and her classmates teasing made her want to try it out. Someone started teasing again, telling Willow and me to kiss. I wanted to wave the end someone gave me a thumbs up. Even the professor struggled to hold back laughter. George, you're lucky that girl probably didn't understand Spanish. Or you would have caused her big trouble. I wanted to disappear from embarrassment, feeling utterly defeated. I gave up entirely. Luckily she didn't understand. Or if we both liked each other but missed the chance due to bad timing, I'd regret it forever. The professor comforted. If you missed it, it wasn't meant to be. You'll find someone better. After some more jokes, the professor having a serious matter, quieted everyone down. She informed us her friend's book needed translating and asked if we were interested in taking on the task. It was a great opportunity to hone our skills and earn some money. Everyone enthusiastically agreed. After finalizing the work details, the professor left. The group made a few more jokes about me and Senior Maria before dispersing. I was fed up with this crazy world, having to deal with these boundaryless people. Finally, I scolded David thoroughly. He treated me to several hot pot meals as an apology and swore to quit drinking. Only then did I reluctantly forgive him. The translation club started to get busy, but in our free time, some people still shipped me and Senior Maria as a couple. Some even bet on when we would officially announce our relationship. I was speechless and tried to stop them, but it was ineffective. On the other hand, Senior Maria never responded to these rumors, so it didn't seem like she liked me. I felt relieved and stopped caring about those people. Soon, we were halfway through translating the book. The professor's friend invited us to a team-building outing on the weekend to discuss the localization issues of the book in South America. But the weather didn't cooperate, and it rained over the weekend. We decided to have a dinner party at the professor's villa instead. David, eager to see the professor's daughter again, rushed to the professor's house first. I, along with a few seniors, went to buy ingredients, so we arrived a bit late. As soon as we entered the courtyard, we heard a burst of laughter from afar. Getting closer, we heard them masking Senior Maria, she liked me. They joked that she was too reserved. Senior, do you like George or not? Every time we see you, you're three meters away from him. Exactly. If you like him, just confess boldly. A woman chasing a man is like a veil. If you miss the chance, you'll regret it. The professor and her friend were smiling and enjoying the scene. The professor's friend even encouraged Senior Maria to confess. It's okay if you fail. You can still be friends. Senior Maria turned to the girl beside her and asked, You have a boyfriend. Give me some advice. The girl pondered from the back. I couldn't see her face, but there was something familiar about her gestures. Someone noticed our arrival and took the ingredients from us. David pulled me into the group. He pointed at the girl beside Senior Maria and introduced, Look, this is the beautiful daughter of the professor I told you about. Isn't she amazing? I turned to greet the girl. The moment she turned around, I was stunned. It was Willow. She was even more beautiful than before. With a well-defined face and lawn, dark hair draped over her shoulders. Every smile, 
Every side glance exuded an enchanting charm. I'm off. But then I realized Willow and I were already holding hands. Willow pulled me upstairs, saying she had something to give me. Avoiding the crowd's nonsense, she took a delicate velvet box from a cabinet and took out a matching couple's bracelet. Looking at me with deep emotion, she asked, George, will you be my boyfriend? I put on the bracelet, unable to suppress my smile, and asked, then can I kiss you? She shyly nodded and closed her eyes, her lips slightly parted, my heart pounded, feeling like a fire was burning in my chest. But I suddenly wanted to tease her, so I took her hand and gave it a light pack. She opened her eyes, pouting, and was about to leave. But before she could step out of the room, I pulled her back. Why are you mad? We haven't even started. We kissed for a long time. Then she kissed me for a long time, feeling like she was almost out of breath. I finally let go, she said, in a hoarse voice. No more kissing. Let's go eat. We have plenty of time. At the dinner table, everyone clearly wasn't ready to let Willow and me off the hook. When did you two start liking each other? Tell us who fell first, I answered quickly. I definitely fell first, I still remember it was my birthday, but I couldn't reach my parents by phone for days. After evening self-study, I was sitting alone in the classroom hallway. Willow, who had been watching from above for a while, came down and then pointed at the small cartoon cake in my hand, pretending to swallow. Can you share some with me? I'm a bit hungry. The cake was a gift from my cousin, so I gave it all to her. She broke it in half and handed the other half back to me. Sharing is something even little kids know. She made me laugh and I told her it was my birthday. She wished me happy birthday and asked what I wanted as a gift. I said, I didn't need anything. Just felt a bit lonely as my parents had always been away and rarely celebrated my birthday with me. A few days later, Willow gave me a painting she had made. It was a family portrait of three, with the boy in the middle surrounded by his parents, smiling happily. That picture made me envious, and I stared at it for a long time. After that, Willow often shared her newly bought small cakes with me. She might have thought I liked them, but actually, I didn't, however. I couldn't refuse them. It was through those cakes that I got to spend a little time with her. But every time she finished sharing the cake, she would leave. She kept a caring yet distant attitude. I didn't understand why she did that, but it made me develop feelings for her. And I liked her for a long time. After I finished speaking, Willow didn't seem surprised. As we walked along, she smiled and said she had known for a long time that I liked her, but perhaps she liked me even earlier. From the time you held a funeral for your cat at the back gate of the school, I noticed you. I saw you wrap its body in your scarf. Although you didn't cry, your serious expression made me feel that you must be a very gentle bow. Actually, I always felt like I was that cat. That lonely stray cat had been taken in by me for a long time, or rather, it had accompanied my loneliness for a long time. It always made me feel warm and fuzzy. I liked holding it. It was very gentle and always responded to me kindly. So, when it died, I felt like I was burying myself, saying goodbye to a close family member. That day, I thought a lot, if living is a fact rather than an action, all we can do is experience it. I experienced its departure and was glad it didn't have to experience my death because it remained peacefully in my arms until the very end. I didn't expect Willow to notice, as well. Willow said that from then on, she started paying attention to me, especially after discovering that I celebrated my birthday in the hallway. She would occasionally pretend to pass by our class to sneak a glance at me. No wonder she always appeared around me and I was feeling down. Handing me a piece of abstractly broken cake. Little did I know, she had deep feelings, but you never really talked to me. You always left after breaking the cake, I said, puzzled. That's because I accidentally overheard you on the phone saying you liked me, but definitely wouldn't date early. What could I do? I could only secretly watch you. That explains why she always looked for me but never spoke. Always thought she was maintaining some strange persona. After Willow made our relationship public, some admirers of hers were still unwilling to give up and confess to her. Her school was next door, and I often went to watch the drama unfold. I was really there to watch. Not to catch a cheater. Every time Willow saw me watching with a nonchalant expression, she would get puffed up with anger, thinking I didn't care about her and wasn't jealous at all. I explained that it wasn't that I didn't care, but having such a beautiful girlfriend required a strong heart. Otherwise, if I was anxious and insecure every day, how could I handle it? The last time, I couldn't stand it anymore. 
Seeing Willa still puffed up with anger, I lifted her chin and kissed her in front of the guy confessing to her. Then I turned to the confessing woes and asked, Do you want to keep watching? They were indignant but left in anger. They called me a show-off. Willow also scolded me, even harder than they did, blushing and hitting my chest. From then on, the world was quiet. One weekend, when Willow and I were alone watching the movie, things got heated. She was even more enthusiastic than I was. Just when we were about to cross a line, the professor came home early from a trip to a neighboring city. Seeing the professor's face darken, Willow quickly confessed, Mom, it was my idea. The professor snorted. I knew it. How many times have I told you to cherish yourself? Didn't you listen? Seeing her getting scolded pitifully, I stepped in to take the blame. Teacher, it's my fault. The professor's expression changed, instantly becoming gentle. I know what kind of child you are. The teacher glanced at Willow, sighed helplessly, and gave us a lecture on adult responsibilities. She even gave us a box of contraceptives, implicitly approving our future actions. I was so embarrassed I could barely lift my head. David, feeling guilty towards Senior Maria, followed her around every day to make amends. After all, he was the one who started the teasing. I often saw them meeting together, shopping together, avoiding me together, which I found amusing, even in the translation club. Their desks were next to each other, David, with shifty eyes, explained. Don't misunderstand. It's because Willa warned Senior Maria to stay away from George. So we moved seats, everyone understood, and didn't he expose them. But it was true that Willow had warned Senior Maria to stay away from me. She was too scared to even accept a bottle of water from me. That girl knows Sanda. A single sentence expressed her helplessness. It was quite pitiful. I told Willow not to treat her cousin like that. After all, she hadn't crossed any lines. Every time, Willow would grit her teeth and say, just thinking about how she asked for my help to pursue you and I even gave her advice makes me angry. I was curious. What advice did you give her? To send you small cakes. Luckily, she never got the chance to do it. I laughed. Not every guy likes small cakes. Besides, I only like the ones broken abstractly. Years later, on another sunny afternoon, Willow and I walked out of the civil affairs bureau. Don't get me wrong. We got married. The sunlight that had shone on our young love once again cast shadows on the blooming flowers of our love. I, George, could finally give Willow a boda, which is Spanish for wedding, still the same to people, this time holding hands openly. As the breeze blew, the two golden figures stayed close together, from curiosity to care, to falling in love, to romance, and finally to marriage. It was all step by step, facing the light. What comes next is holding hands and growing old together. Willow's side story. In the second year of high school, I originally wanted to transfer to my mom's place, but I decided against it. After all, this school was pretty good. Mainly, I liked eating those cartoon small cakes. But then, well, cartoon small cakes. I probably never want to eat them again in this lifetime. Sigh. He left in such a hurry, he must have had some unspeakable reason. I couldn't help but ask his former friends. They said George's first choice was S University. All right, then I'll aim for C University, right next to it. We're bound to meet again, if we're so close, right? I guessed he would study Spanish at S University, given how good he was at it. At least that I love you he said sounded really nice. My mom happened to work at S University. As soon as school started, I asked her if there was a student named George. She said there was. I was over Jote and practiced long time no see over and over in the air. Hehe, <laughs> I found him. It's George. It's my Boda.